Okay, what's your name? Uh, my name is Lisa. Lisa? Yeah, it's more like Alesia. Alesia. Yes, Alesia. Like okay, lovely. And you're obviously uh, Ukrainian. So yeah. uh, when the war started, you didn't, did you go anywhere? Yeah, I did for uh, for almost six months. Okay. Uh, but then I decided to come back. Yeah. Where did you go? Oh, I like... Me and my mom we traveled all around Europe searching for a place to stay and then we found an apartment in uh, Austria so I stayed in Vienna for like four months. Okay, all right. And uh, what made you want to come back? Uh, people here I visited. Uh, I visited like to see if my dad was okay. okay. Um, and uh, for just this brief time of couple of weeks I had like a lot of emotions and Kiev was so great. And it was just like home. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I decided. I decided that I wanted to uh, stay here to be with the people I love yeah. and to be the part of this history. And uh, so I had to decide if I wanted like to have a safe, predicted future or uh, something fun and with my friends. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so I decided to, to come back to, to my friends and people I loved. Okay, and can I ask you a question? Like, yeah. um, so what was it like for you when the war started, like, uh, in the very beginning? Uh, it seemed surreal, uh, almost. Like, I, I used to work in fashion before the like the big war started, the full-scale war started, and uh, so I traveled to Paris or London for fashion weeks and something, and I had like friends all around Europe, and being in a civilized society and then meeting this kind of barbarian thing <laughs> I don't know yeah. uh, like people dying around you bombs like rockets in this in like 2022 was just surreal it just didn't seem like true and what so um what would you say that life was like here now in Kiev? Now? Yeah. Compared to what it was in the very beginning? Uh, now it's tired. It's, no. it's tired. I mean, every, everybody's just super tired. Yeah. Because uh, it's hard to have... It's hard to have an emotional day off or something. Yeah. You constantly meet death. And like, on one side, you have a lot of people who are fighting. Then on the other hand, if you're staying in in like in Kiev in civil life, then you have to do something to to make this country better. So when the war ends, everything is gonna be fine, and you have to be a part of it. Uh, like you have to take care of politics or of the city, of uh, like what's been built, what's the I don't know social politics of the country, and so and so and so. So you have to take a huge part. You have to pay a lot of attention. Um, and then you have a lot of stressful news all the time, like every day. <laughs> what sort of news do you get on a daily basis? Um, I mean, like bombs in Kharkiv, bombs in Poltava, then bombs in Lviv. Like every day there's, there's an explosion somewhere. Uh, so you see personal stories of people and family uh, who are dying and who are devastated and it's hard not to not to be emotionally engaged in this and like being emotionally engaged in, in it all the time is just super tiring yeah because uh, I, I met somebody when I was waiting to get the bus here in Poland that lives in uh, that was from Kiev and they told me that you know the rockets they go off mainly like through the night yeah know, yeah um, the, all the deadly ones yeah yeah so <laughs> it's and it's it's more like a psychological thing it's to get the people drained and really really tired because if you're constantly yeah, being woken up yeah they're they're like sleep deprived and, yeah uh, and it's yeah. sort of like because if you're constantly interrupting somebody's sleep mm -hmm. and then it kind of weakens the people and and then weakens their you know inability to be able to sort of like yeah i think it's straight it's a part of uh, i think it's a part of this war 
uh, doing psychological stuff. It's psychological, yeah. yeah it to to tear like the country yeah. apart, like from inside. Yeah, because then you'll be agitated. I know when I'm sleep deprived, you get very stressed out with the people that are around you, and before you know it, you're fighting with each other and stuff like that. And so, how do you think that as a country, you're sort of like standing together and making sure that that don't happen? That he doesn't win the psychological war, because uh, I think that's his own as well. Well, I think that there are some things that country could do and then on the other hand there's like a lot of stuff that everyone can do. Uh, like the country probably should have an informational politics uh, or something and somebody to take charge of this, uh, of this direction. Uh, on the other hand, uh, me personally I'm just trying to talk to my friends more. Yeah. Um, and like to, to people I know, if I see that they're like stressed, I just try to to talk and see what's going on inside. Yeah, and I think it's... We're, we're yeah. also having like a lot of discussions um, in terms of... Um, there's a lot of information which is basically disinformation from Russia, uh, uh, but it always takes... Uh, its basis is always true, but then it just gets manipulated. So I'm trying to talk to my parents, my friends, and we're like discussing the topics that are like the hottest in media to see if this could be disinformation and what are the criteria to measure to measure information and to see if you should emotionally respond to that or maybe you should breathe yeah. out and then and then just think of it another time and maybe then you'll just get a bit more relaxed about this yeah i think it's important to just take one day as it comes because yeah. it would be very unpredictable you don't know what tomorrow is going to bring basically uh, yeah that's true but yeah it, it's it's kind of hard because like you don't always have this one day because on the next day you'll have another news and like it's yeah the speed of the news the stressful news is just so bad that you don't have time to think maybe that's also an aspect of this thing. and can i ask you um what are you where are you at regarding your faith in jesus like who is jesus to you uh, I'm not religious. You're not religious? Yeah, okay. Not. But do you believe in God? Um, I don't know. I think I'm, I'm like more of... Um, I believe that religion is a cool construct that helps people go through life. I, yeah, I mean, I'm not religious either, yeah. so believe me, but I'll, I'll share with you in a minute what where I'm at regarding yeah. my faith. But uh, what, what, what would you say about God? Like, who is God to you? Like, would you believe that there is a God? Um, I believe that there might be something more. Okay. Uh, but I just don't... Uh, know what it is. I, I just choose not to, not to brand it with any name. Have you prayed since this war started? No. You've no. never thought about praying no. and asking God to protect no, you no. and keep you safe and keep your family safe and, mm. you know, okay, oh, well, that's a shame because, <laughs> uh, you know, once if you know him and you have a relationship yeah. with him and you know that even in your darkest hours there's just so much hope and so much joy and so much peace that comes from him. Um, you know, and it's not a case of like you say, you know, people, they clutch, clutch on to religion and, you know, because it, it, it's, it works for them. Uh, and in some instances, with regarding religion, I guess that's true. But when you come to know Jesus, like as your personal Lord and Savior, and you actually have a relationship with him, mm -hmm. um, the joy that you have, like for example, there could be bombs going off around you, and that's happened to me before yep. uh, when I was in Israel. You know, we was in Ashkelon, and um, okay, that's <laughs> you never know what that siren is, but uh, there was. Um, bombs going off over our heads and things like that but we had a supernatural joy mm -hmm. that just came from our Lord that surpassed all understanding that it, you know instead of feeling like scared you just had this joy and you just mm -hmm. had this inner Come peace on. you just Come knew on. you were safe Come because Jesus was in control when he Come had on. you and that is like indescribable like it's something that I can't describe to you the yeah. feeling that you know 
that you get from that and the joy that you have and and stuff it, 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 it's an incredible blessing but you know it's not about religion there's a lot yeah, of them yeah. so you I have understand, yeah, that the, uh, this might be uh, this might be about the emotional support that comes from inside no it's more like obviously you see the thing is like I said there's lots of religions mm -hmm. and the religion says join our church and you know like Catholicism Jehovah Witness Mormon mm -hmm. you know you've got all these different religions Islam and they all think they are the true way and yeah. so if you do what they say and follow their rules then you might just make it to heaven just got to be a good person and and most people just genuinely think that they are good but yeah at the same time if you you know we all still do things that we're not proud of sometimes we get angry sometimes we have pride sometimes we you know people they lost they have you know they do jealousy and anger and you know and then there's greed and power and you know like hence the reason for all these wars and things like that so you know um, it, the core of man really you know we are sinful by nature we, we sin against God every day every single human and so even though we might think we're relatively good and even though these people join these religions and do all these works it doesn't change them from the inside it doesn't change their hearts they're still gonna lie they're still gonna have pride they're still gonna do all these things that are bad and you know and a lot of times that will turn people away from Jesus because you see these people do good as go in the church thinking they're better than everybody else while at the same time thinking it's okay to go out and get drunk and do all the same things that everybody else is doing but yet looking at those down on people and so that sort of makes people think well you know look at them hypocrites and I don't want to be a part of that and so um, but what God wants with us is a relationship like a one-to-one -one relationship that you don't need you don't need religion you you don't need a preach a pope or a, mm -hmm. um, a, a, a priest you don't need uh, Muhammad and you don't need Joseph Smith or Charles Taylor Russell you don't need these people to tell you how to have a relationship with God it's mm -hmm. personal and it's about you and him but the only problem is is that we are separated from him because of sin and so what God did was he sent Jesus into the world and Jesus came and he lived a perfect sinless life and he died on the cross was buried and raised on the third day and he suffered and died in our place he took our sin on him and then three days later rose again on the third day when you believe in Jesus from your heart so you was to say you was to believe what I'm saying to you right now and accept what I'm saying to you right now is true and you believed it and you told Jesus I believe you're God I believe you died for me personally not just the sins of the world but me mm -hmm. and was buried and rose again on the third day Jesus himself would supernaturally change your heart regenerate you make you alive give you the gift of the Holy Spirit and reconcile you back to God so that you would have relationship mm -hmm. not religion so even when things are going wrong and the whole world just seems to be falling apart you will have this peace and this joy and you know that no matter what happens live or die you're gonna you have Jesus and that's something that is incomparable like you cannot compare mm -hmm. that to anything in this world and like I say it's not about you trying to be good no one in God's eyes is good we've all sinned we've all fallen short of his glory no one can get to heaven or uh, you know receive eternal life through their good deeds because no one is good we've all sinned and God is holy and we're not so we need atonement for sin someone's got to pay and either you pay or you accept God's atonement for you which is Jesus and the moment you believe in your heart that Jesus is God that he died for your sin was buried and raised on the third day that's salvation that's eternal life and it really is easy and then God will save you change you and enable you to live godly and walk in his ways and whatever it's a personal relationship between you and Jesus and so can I encourage you to read like the gospel of John if I give you one will you read it I think I have something already that was a gospel track read that if you follow the ABC on that gospel track if you follow that from your heart Jesus will save you but I recommend that you get to know him as well so if I give you a gospel of John um, I pray that you thank you I'm like I'm, I'm <laughs> no, honestly I have loads so <laughs> Alright, so there we go. Can I, there you go. I pray that you read it, honestly. Every <laughs> word in there is true. Jesus is the best thing to ever, ever, ever happen to anyone. And, you know, the more you get to know him, the more you're going to just fall in love with him because he is the best God. In the, we, we couldn't ask for a better God. Honestly, he's perfect in all of his ways, in everything that he does. So, you know, and honestly, I believe that he led us here 
so that he could show people that you know he's with them and that he cares and that he loves them and especially like you say because people are tired they're really tired now <sighs> I'm sorry I just want this conversation to end okay all right well I'll pray for you okay all right God bless okay bye